I'm Charlene Sanjayko. I'm the founder of Powerhouse, the lead impact officer, and I'm deep, deeply, deeply grateful to have you here. I want to acknowledge that Powerhouse is an Indigenous-owned social impact organization, and our vehicle for change making is impact media production. Um, Gather for Her is a very important part of that, and we're very, very happy to have you here. I want to pass it to uh, uh, our co-host this morning, and uh, I'm going to pass over to you to start with, Christina. Oh, fantastic. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm very much looking forward to this conversation with uh, with the braid, because uh, and this is this, these are the kind of conversations that I want to be having. So good morning and welcome, everyone. I am joining you this morning from, from Golden, BC, which is also the traditional territory of the Tanaha and the Shuswap peoples and the Columbia River Métis. So I'm pleased to, uh, pleased to be here and looking forward to uh, connecting with my co-host. So Sharon, I'm going to pass, pass it over to you. Thank you, Christina, and, and welcome everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Sharon Marshall and uh, I am one of the Braid. And I'm, I'm super excited to be uh, with you here today. Uh, I come to this conversation and offer an indigenous lens. And so that, so I'll be listening um, with um, that, um, in that vein. And uh, I come to you today from the traditional and, and ancestral territories of the Sinanamu and Sinanawas First Nations on Vancouver Island. And um, very excited to be here. Welcome. Tina, over to you. Good morning. It is so lovely to see all three of your pairs of eyes. So grateful to be here. Welcome, everyone. Um, I am Tina O. Oh. I am calling in from Nequelaquam, also known as Bowen Island. I'm grateful to be part of this story of this time on the unceded territory of the Squamish people out here on the Coast Salish Sea. I'm excited for this conversation uh, as, a, as a listener and a story coach, someone who tracks the story of us as it is emerging in the braided way that we listen for the wisdom between us and lean into each other, decolonizing leadership, reimagining leadership, reindigenizing leadership. The story is us in this braided way. So I'm, I have no idea what's going to happen because it hasn't happened yet. And, uh, yeah, let's dig into this beautiful story of us and the braid in 2022 and, where do we start, Shar? Where do you want to go? Hmm, I will I'll kick it off and uh, I'll reflect back on a memory that kind of in, in my mind, <laughs> not sure if it's in everyone's, but in my mind, it's kind of the, the origin of the braid. And uh, it, it goes with the story of Nika, which we will, you know, we'll be sure to reshare if you're not familiar with that story, but it, it's kind of my, my origin story. And um, in, a, in a quest that what started probably, you know, 24 months ago or, or just right around my, my 50th birthday, I was really exploring um, the interrelationship of, of building more faith in my life like really experiencing what that was like and it that relationship uh the interplay with fear because if you're not afraid you have no reason to call up faith and i was just really taken with this this dynamic of faith and fear and um 
I wanted to really explore how to be more brave, brave in a braid, yeah, uh, in a way that that felt real and tangible and practical. Because I am a Virgo, like, what does that actually feel like in my life, and how how do I go about doing that differently? Because I've I've been I I, I feel like I am a very brave person in and of myself. I'm a pretty confident, brave person, I thought. So what does it look like beyond that? And that's where it kicked off for me. It, it was really that exploration of how might I be more brave in my life? How might I make more brave decisions? And end on from there. So that's all I'll say in terms of kicking it off, but we can blame Nika. Beautiful. I think that might be a great place to start, like a gateway for us kind of to jump in. Um, when I think about the learning that braiding has brought into my life and into my work and into my being and the way I am in the world, um, when Nika arrived for you and you shared her with us, um, it woke up a remembering in me of, of like, who are you really? And who are you really when you live on that impulse of your big offering in the world? I don't even like to use the word work anymore. It's like, who are you really when you're living on your living, if you will? And and then, then the risk, so going back to your word brave, brave for me at that time, and still is, is leaning into people. Brave for me, and it's different than asking for help. Help is one thing. Help still separates me from people, whereas leaning with people, leaning on people, trusting, trusting the wisdom that doesn't come from my head, integrating your wisdom, that's brave. That was brave for me. And it's still subtly brave for me. And I notice that um, I am offering more of my life out there as a result of the braid and I'm risking more and I'm softening more. Like how does risking and softening happen at the same time? So that's, that's, that's my version of your Nika story for, for me. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Tina. Thanks for, for that. When I think about, um, when I think about the whole story of 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 Nika and that emerging for uh, for, for Charlene, it reminds me of the fact that um, part of our relational currency is an inside job, right? It is it is um, it's building relational currency with ourselves and with um, uh, both of our our, our younger selves. Um, our older selves, uh, our, our current selves, and then building that. Um, so building that internal intimacy, but then building that intimacy externally, right? So the the interconnectedness that, um, like, I have watched. I think powerhouse really uh, explode um, as the, as the four of us have braided together. And then that that has a ripple effect out into our broader communities, but it's it's both an inside job and an ex, and an um, and an outside job, right? And it happens concurrently, right? It happens it it happens um, in, internally as we build um, our own internal capacity, but then it happens. Um, relationally too and so it's that it's that interconnectedness between um between ourselves and between all of the bits and pieces of us and but but it's all it's one of those things that's so difficult to well I wouldn't say it's difficult to articulate it's um but there has to be an understanding around it like there's a there's a different vernacular 
that um, that is explored and expressed that that requires a bravery. And um, what I have noticed is that we're our 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 language and our sense of ourselves and the way that we walk is is much braver. And there is a level of trust and bravery in in the in the language that we use. Um, risking being misunderstood in some ways, right? We're we're risking being misunderstood, and we're willing to still enter a conversation that um, is it includes both tangible and the intangibles, and we're able to speak to intangibles in um, in very rich, rich ways. And so, it, it's like I said, it's a, it's an intimacy that um, that requires risk both internally and externally so that's kind of that's that's my version of an eco story <laughs> so Sharon I'm curious where, where does that take you wow Christina and Tina and Char I mean you all um had to write everything down because there's so much going on in my brain right now um Tina, when you mentioned uh, softening and risking, that really um, uh, resonated with me. Um, yeah, and I, and I think that um, um, how I see it, the braid uh, and how it's affected uh, me and the work that I do, I see that um, the softening part is is uh, is the, uh, when you risk. So the image that came to my mind was when you know you know that exercise where you the trust exercise where you have somebody stand behind you and you lean back. That's that, that came to my mind. And, and I thought, okay, so, so that's the risk. And then the softening is, is just the knowing that you're, you're held that you, you, there's no, there's a risk, but there's no risk. You know what I mean? Like there, it, it, there's a risk, but you aren't worried about that there. I don't know how to, to, but yes, Tina, you're nodding, you know, it. yes. Um, so, um, and that's the the leaning into each other. Um, so, so I have I've, I've felt that I've grown exponentially in this braid because of that. Because I am able to be vulnerable. So there's the risk, and I'm not worried about um, showing all my gnarly little pieces because I know that that, that you're not going to judge me, and but still hold me accountable to myself um and then and, and that's the trust that we have in each other um and yes um, it, um christina it's an inside job um this relational currency um and the, the one other thing that came to my mind is that um um it's it, it's the energy that we um that 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 um, um what's the word I'm looking for the energy that it evolves that as a with the four of us as we get going um, it, it's like in the vortex this energy that evolves and 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 what's really exciting about that is is that energy is the new resume and so um, so we we are creating something that that um, other people, if they would just watch and, 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 and I know people are already like, they, they understand the, the ones that understand what the braid is capable of when you, when you have a braid that they're like, Oh man, I want some of that because that's very powerful. And, and so I'm going to just leave it there for now. <laughs> okay, I'm totally going to pick up on that. Because something that we've said before, first off, I just want to name, hello, energy is the new resume. Hello. Like, um, I'm writing it on my hand. I'm going to write it on my mirror. I'm like, right. And it's not like that's something we don't know in a different way. We've often like, for, that's, that's a first impression. Our body knows immediately whether or not the person or the business that we're engaging with lands with us. We know immediately immediately if we slow down, right? And that's the energy piece. Um, I wanted to pick up on um, something that Shar offered 
uh, a while back and continues to offer. And it connects to this idea of when a braid walks into the into a boardroom. Like what happens when a braid walks into a boardroom? Or let's take it even further. What happens when the boardroom becomes a braid? There's no boardroom anymore. There's a braid. What happens? And um, Shar offered something a long time ago and that I'm going to connect back to my, my own Nika story where she said, like, she just had this day where she's like, you know what? I'm not thinking for me anymore. I'm not thinking for me. I'm thinking for the four of us. I'm thinking for all of us, which connects back to you, Sharon, and thinking for, and, and the indigenous principles of all our relations. And um, I want to connect this to, to the, the, the gather conversation we had last week, which was around the, like the awkward how of moving forward in the world, the awkward how when we don't have a context of, of, of how, so we're, we use all these words that we love, compassion, empathy, emotional intelligence. We use all of that, but what the hell does that actually mean in terms of the living of it in business? And when I think of when the boardroom becomes a braid, that's what that is. And when I think about what you said, um, Sharon, about that, I, I, I can bring all my gnarly bits. It's, it's gnarly. We can bring all our gnarly bits. Yes, because we have compassion and empathy, but we can bring all our gnarly bits because your gnarly bits are my gnarly bits. Because when I start thinking as a four or a hundred or a thousand or a, the world, your gnarly bits are mine. I don't need compassion. I don't even need all those, those words that are helpful. They are helpful, but I don't need them because I'm thinking about the connection rather than the thing that's going to make me get to the connection. That come, but where does that take you? Or or make you separate. Right? That's where that takes. I I'd yeah, I, I'd love to jump in there for, for a second and, and um circle around um what happens when the braid is the boardroom. When the boardroom is the braid. Because I think really what we're doing is modeling a new way of leadership, a braided approach to leadership. So I'm talking beyond a well-functioning board. I'm talking beyond a well, uh, beyond a well-functioning executive team. I'm actually talking about a braided approach to leadership that is um, a lived experience that we're inviting as we consider what our re-entry into a new, elevated, imagined, expanded way of change making. And a lot of change making happens and can be powered up through an organization. So let's go there for a minute. And, and I'm going to take you right back to the actual act of braiding. We've all done it. We've all actually braided our hair or our Barbie doll's hair or our daughter's hair. And when you do that, you you reach out to you reach out to the outside with a little bit of tension, a little bit of tension to create a good braid, right? Otherwise it's just fuzzy and floppy. You reach out. So that can be a lot of things, reaching out just beyond, just beyond belief reaching out to all our relations, reaching out to the periphery. What if we reached out beyond the timeline that we live in now and actually remembered back to what our ancestors are asking of us? What if we reached out with a little bit of tension? Because trust me, a lot of our conversations as a braid are not easy conversations. I tell people all the time, you couldn't get four more different women, four more different human beings. That's what makes us such a powerful braid. And if you're not willing to reach out beyond belief, beyond the current timeline, beyond just what we know, but actually what we feel and, and push against that with a little bit of tension, then, then you're not really creating the deliberate weave like you could now what what happens if you actually take that visual into your leadership conversation 
that's what I'm curious where that takes you. Well, and it reminds me that, um, you know, one of the things that that we have talked about is how do we, you know, how do we lead from our gifts and this comes and, and, and how do we amplify one another's gifts? And this comes back to um, seeing, seeing one another's diamond selves, what we're capable of, and then calling one another to that. I am calling you to something bigger. And that tension comes from, um, and that, and, and like you said, there, that tension is really, really key to growth because if it's, it's like, if you have too much tension, then it'll snap. Right. And, and then if there's no tension, it's milk toast. And so you have to have just the right amount of tension that, that pushes, pushes out to, to the edges and, and actually leads to systemic change. But that is a calling out, like, Sharon said, all my bits are welcome here, right? Like all of me, you see all of me and you, and, and, and you love me, but you also see my diamond self and call me out at, at at my highest, right? And that is what we're doing for one another. And there's, there's a risk there. And one of the things I was saying about last, last week or a couple of weeks ago is about the the temptation to romanticize the discomfort Um, because, uh, it, it's, we use those words, but, but we, but, but the truth is that discomfort is, is real and it is, um, it, it's not fun (laughs) at, at, at times and it's, and it's okay. But if, but part of, part of our work is reminding ourselves, stay in the discomfort. Yes. Acknowledge the discomfort, stay in it stay in the place of, of tension, because that's the place of, that's your edge, that's the growth. And, and as we, um, with our intention to, to make our edges the center place, and then make, <laughs> right? And then if we keep making our edges the center place, we constantly are, are growing, growing at, at our edges. So that's, um, that's that, that beautiful, place of, of of between faith and and wanting to maintain the status quo right because the status quo is safe i just want to feel safe right and that and our brains want to do that and so part of part of our work together is calling um calling that higher level of consciousness that the, the higher self that diamond self to to its edges and that's um yeah, it, it it's both uh, it, it's both lovely and unnerving at the same time. It's <laughs> it's a polarity. <laughs> and and Christina, you always say you know stay in the room, right? That's when you need to stay in the room. Um, and because we want to we want to run away and hide because it's like oh god, I don't, I don't want to face that. Um, but how, how many how many you know, like how often do you do you grow? In that comfortableness, nobody grows in that comfortableness. It's 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 in the um, discomfort that we have our, our biggest um, uh, in, insights and aha moments. And, and so um, I totally agree with that. Um, and yeah, I want to build on that, or maybe challenge us a little bit. Um, because I, as, as soon as a story starts to move into philosophy, I'm like, okay, we're off the aliveness. Ooh. we're in, we're, we're in beautiful collusion. We're colluding. We're colluding. See, see. Okay. So I want to, and it's still beautiful. We can land. Okay. So the next thing that I want to bring, bring us to, I want to grab on something that Brenda Morrison in the chat has offered here around tension that doesn't snap and fragment. And, and before we go there, I want to plant, I had this thought in my head, which I think connects, which is, you know, what makes me nuts uh, as an artist is what I call death by committee. Ugh. So like death by committee is, so like if we're going to challenge this, if a braid walks into a boardroom or the braid becomes a boardroom, how do we, uh, like how do, we need safety in order order to take risk. 
Without safety, we don't take risks. But safety can get comfortable, and now we're in death by committee. We all have to agree, no, we don't. No, we don't. And that's where the tension is. And so I'm just, I'm just want to dive into whatever comes up here. Like I, and I want to offer that going to your thing, um, uh, Christina, about our highest gifting and our shine. Um, you know, in my work, my belief is, is we, if we all live as the tall poppy that we are, everything heals. Everything heals. And yet there's this thing when we're seven years old, somewhere around seven, when, when we actually start to become the tall poppy and all of a sudden we're on the playground, the kids are like, okay, you're just a little bit too loud or you're just a little bit too, too emotional or you're just a little bit too opinionated, but it's really tall poppy, right? And so there's the tension is our full gifting at the table. And yet how do we, ha ha, can we get a bit more into the tension? What comes up for you? Like It's like the polarity of death by committee and the tension that doesn't snap comes up i i can take a stab at it like i don't and, and i'm not I'm definitely not saying that i have all the answers i think one of the things i love is that we're constantly exploring like this isn't a philosophy this is a game this is a game of exploration of what's possible and as someone who's you know, sat in local government <laughs> for seven years, there was many times when people would wonder, you know, if we were going to debate or work on something until we got complete consensus. And so is, is co-creation consensus? That's, that's the question to explore. And my, in my opinion, it's not. Co-creation is not necessary. And I remember saying to you once, T, I'm not about sitting in a circle singing Kumbaya. That's not me. Because circles in that formation cannot move as fast as we need to to get to where we need to in order to do the change making needed in our generation. So we better learn to do it differently. And I don't mean to rush through it, but I'm talking about what are, what are the systems of interconnectedness? What are the systems? Like, what does that breathe like that we've failed? We've failed in the past generation where it's all about, this is my business. This is my profit. Oh, I might give you a piece of it, but no, I'm going to work in isolation until I burn right out because this is my business. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm the CEO. And you know what? That's bullshit. Look at where it's gotten us. And so it's time to reimagine what and how we work that is so big and beautiful of a dream, it won't be completed in our lifetime. And just get rid of the ego piece of that. We're not going to solve this baby, but man, are we going to lay the blueprint and the imprint? Because it's been laid for us. We have just, we, we just missed it. Our, our heads have been too far I'm going to choose to politely say in the air um, to, to actually remember the way of being that was taught to us many generations ago. And let's just get back to that all in one canoe paddling in the same direction. So here's, Here's where that takes me. It's, it's, um, it is remembering that we have a stewardship responsibility rather than ownership, right? Um, 
it's recognizing that we uh, that that stewardship responsibility for the time that we're here rather than like you said ownership oh this is mine and this is my accomplishment or this is my role right and when we see um, our our roles and even our stewardship responsibility uh, in that way then we are we we are committed to a positive outcome, but not attached to the outcome, right? Um, um, and and so that requires it, it requires a level of faith. It requires faith in one another. It requires um, faith in the long game, and it requires an internal faith. So this comes back to the internal external that it's um, always. <laughs> It's always ebbing and flowing. Yeah, yeah. So it's that infinity loop of internal, external. Um, I've said it lots of times. Amanda said it um, in, when we were chatting with her that uh, your your external world is a reflection of your internal world. So what, what are you paying attention to internally? And part of, part of our work is calling one another to pay attention internally and externally to what needs to to be healed so that we can move forward from a place of internal healing and external healing and that's that that's and again it comes back to calling one another to that to that place seeing that i see your healed whole self i see what you're what's possible for you yeah. And I'd like to um, just, I like that word, I see your healed whole self, because I would like to challenge that a little bit and say that um, um, that we are all actually um, are, are healed and whole. I mean, I mean, we came in, into the world like that. But what makes us seem unwhole is the conditioning that we've had in our lifetimes society now you know has this way for everybody to behave and you know the corporations that that's all it's all about the almighty dollar they've they've um um raped and pillaged the world for um find what they determine to be finite resources um and um and and it's and that's the way our world exists um but um Brenda put in the chat um, a new found. She's hearing a new foundation for a new humanity built through systems that braid and integrate the internal and exter external world, and um, I would say that that's um, a, re a renewed foundation for a new humanity, for a renewed humanity, because th that is the way it was back in the day. Uh, that's indigenous ways of knowing and being. That's the way things were. And so again, it's just bringing it back. It's just a remembering, and it's a bringing it back. And um, um, yeah, that's <laughs> I love that about you, Sharon. I love that about you. Just like this, the thought, like the impulse closes, the thought closes, and then there's this like wave of. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, that's what I said. I love that. Um, I want to take us, I want to see if, I want to take us into the awkward. I'm like, okay, so it's 2022. We rocked it this year. Like we figured out, we figured out what a brain feels like. We're like, okay, we've been working on this for a year and a half. We're like, ah, we got it. Or we got a step one. Like I always think of, um, let yourself be a baby master. Like we've maybe hit like the first stone in the garden. We're baby masters <laughs> for like in terms of mastery or fullness, you know, baby possibility. Anyway, I'm just trying to find another word than master anyway. Um, and uh, so what next for the braid? Like what? And I'm not trying to like go into our head. Like this is a fire circle conversation. If anyone's been to a fire circle with us, the, a fire circle experience is not about what you know. 
It's about the questions that you're listening for the knowledge in them that are then showing you this next stone in the garden. The next step is your baby potential. When the braid becomes a boardroom, like where, 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 where do you think our edge is? Or and may, I don't know how we get there. Is it our what's our next offering? Like our new another. What what are you expanding into right now? Maybe that's the question. What what's your edge right now, in in your offering in as a braid? Like okay, I'll stall. I'll just go. I'll go first, I guess, because I'm the one that threw it in the room. Okay, so for me, it's story, as we know. And uh, I really feel confident in my listening now, very confident in my listening. I feel very uh, aligned and in it. I feel very confident in my reflecting. I think the next piece is actually um, uh, speaking on, on faith, speaking on the impulse of faith and going, they're going to think I'm stupid if I say this. or that's probably mine. And I don't know what that looks like in a boardroom, but I think that's my edge. Yep. Like letting you see even more. I think that, okay. oh, go ahead, sir. <laughs> I, um, I'll, I'll use Tina's pattern. Um, I, I, I am definitely the caller. I, I am the woman that sits at the fire and, and calls and I'll just keep calling. I, I'm good. You know, I'm um, so I think that where, where i where I can see my work going in a deeper, richer, even more authentic way is, is through faith that I've, that the muscle of faith that I've built I'm able to call more truthfully. Uh, my level of discernment is much more clear. And I think that that has rippled out through the work of Powerhouse. I think it's pretty clear um, the work we're here to do and the work that is not ours to do. And I would say that my call is work in change making that reconnects those who are ready with spirit. That's really my work. And whatever that means to you, um, our, our work is to remember and reconnect to spirit. So that's where, that's where I know I'm going. If you're, if you're really honed in on the listening T, um, I, and I, I, I jokingly say, like, I'll never forget a conversation not too long before Chris, before Christmas, before holiday break, where I, I had a conversation with two male executives. And I literally said, you are, you will attract the type of people you are looking to attract into this incredible organization because you're doing the work to reconnect to spirit. And it, it just came out. And at first they were kind of like a bit puzzled, but then, and I, I just will say it now, like that's what it is for me. Call it what you want, call it diversity, equity, and inclusion, you know, call it, call it the corporate speak you need to, but let's just be honest. We're all human beings here. And we really do know <laughs> where we do need to get back to as human beings in one family. Let's just be honest, call it what it is. And my, my own calling continues to be um, getting out of my head and leading from my heart and uh, and paying attention to what's going on what's going on in my in my heart what is and and, and getting out of the um, I can intellectualize and overthink everything um, it it's and part of it is just trying to 
in some ways, just trying to prove myself that 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 I have I have a place in the world because I'm I'm I because I can think about things and um, and and so it's connecting it's connecting head and heart and really leading from my heart and similar to what Shar just said one of my risks this year and it's because of my my work and my involvement with powerhouse is really risking speaking from my heart rather than just my head taking risks leading a room full of engineers in a meditation right? and being scared that well can i be taken seriously yes i can because i, I and i'm actually not um, if I walk in, if I take myself seriously that way, or, or I don't know, seriously, but, but honestly, if I take myself honestly from a, pl and lead from my heart that I don't actually need to worry, I can risk being misunderstood because I'm okay with that. And, um, it comes back to with what Shar just said around speaking about to a connectedness with spirit and just speaking it and no longer being afraid and and worried about being misunderstood or or thought to be um oh well that's just a silly emotional talk it's like actually I don't care anymore um well and and, and I actually don't want to say that I don't care I I do care and I'm willing to risk that conversation. So more heart led conversations. And, you know, one of one of the things I uh, like to say is, is, you know, lead from your soul rather than your role. And it's okay to lead from your lead from your soul and your role, because that's actually what we want leaders to do, to lead from their soul and their role. So that's where that takes me. I, I'm not going to get in your way, Sharon, but I want to just call out, Christina, um, the piece that you didn't name in your, what you've already got. Like I, I get the edge, like sharing the edge for you, but I just want to make sure that everyone listening knows that um, part of your thinking as you connect into your heart, you've got the thinking, like that's the thing. Like in the four of us, if there's a book to be read, you've read it. Like you hold that role for us. So we don't have to, if there, uh, not that Sharon hasn't read a ton of books too. Like, like Christina has more journals with notes, like that you bring, you're a strategist, you think in systems, like you're the, that's what you bring. And this heart piece I hear, I just, I don't want to discount that either, but the heart piece I hear is the edge, the heart in the system. Yeah, that's totally true, uh, Tina. Um, and so the theme that I'm hearing from all the three of you uh, is um, is the, the faith piece, right? Um, you've all said it, and um, and that gets down to reconnecting to spirit. Um, so I I too um, have been. Um, leaning into my faith muscle more and and trusting in um, spirit and and what is is coming to me and 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 it's scary for me because um, because I I feel like I'm a new indigenous person so I'm and when I talk about leaning into my faith it's a it's and listening it's it's my indigenous and my ancestral wisdom that I that I know that I have been following my whole life, but not really naming it, not knowing what it was. Um, and only coming into my ancestry about 15 years ago. So really, you know, that, that's where I say I, I, I'm a newbie, but really I'm not. Um, just remembering, I'm just waking up and remembering, right? Um, where I am feeling very confident uh, more every day, so I'm in this MBA program, and um, MBAs are all about business, like this, it's a business program, right? So as we know, business, as, as Shar has mentioned, you know, um, we don't talk about spirit in business. That's, you know, but yes, we do. This is the 21st century. And sorry, but we do, the braid does, because 
because why wouldn't we? This is where we need to go. And, and so I am finding myself uh, having more confidence to have those discussions in my MBA classes, bringing in spirit, bringing in the Indigenous knowledge, the Indigenous wisdom, asking the questions, making people a little uncomfortable, but having them realize that, you know, oh, that was, that was it, actually um, uh, a good conversation and you made me think and thank you for that. Um, so that's where I go with that. <laughs> Tina. <laughs> Okay. From a fire circle perspective, this would be the moment where we would collect and like listen for the diamond. I love it when Char swears. I just was playing in the back of my mind that she called bullshit. I'm like, yeah, she did. <laughs> love that. Um, and there's faith in that. I know that's kind of a silly example, but there's also faith, faith in being seen in all the bits. And so if I pull out what's in the space, it's, this is a conversation about the braid in the boardroom or the braid as the boardroom as a practice of faith, as a practice of faith in the people in the room, as a practice of faith of the one family that is the business that the boardroom is the, is supporting. Oh, I just had one more thing to say about that. And that is that, um, and I think um, my confidence grows because business is actually um, becoming more spiritual. I think I've mentioned this to you before, the articles that we have to read, the, the journals and, and uh, the journaled articles, uh, there's more spirit in business. And it's, it's, it's like they're trickling it out to see what kind of response that they get, right? Um, um, it's, it's, it's quite wonderful. And, and I know that there's a few people on this call that can, um, uh, uh, that can attest to that. And, and Sharon, I want to jump into that. It's, it's, because, it's, it's because what's been done hasn't worked. And I think it's important to acknowledge that, you know, the systems that we have created have brought us to this place, right? Like, um, they're, they're, they're purposeful. And, um, and, and it's like, but now where to from here? And that's where, again, that the, the wholeness, like the, the connection between head and heart, um, historically, business has, has just been all an intellectual exercise focused on um, one particular metric and which has generally been financial metrics without considering all of the um, larger impacts. And that has served us it, in some ways. And we have to acknowledge that. And I think there's the, the, we, we've built these systems, but now they're no longer serving us. So how do we, how do we reimagine um, it from a place of, of, of heart centeredness. And like I said, stewardship rather than ownership. Um, that one that sees interconnectedness rather than separateness. And that one that operates from spirit, um, from a place of trust and faith, all of that's required of us now. And um, there's, a, there's often a temptation to sort of assign blame and shame and evil intent um, it, it, it to, to our past. But if we're going to move forward, we need to recognize, well, we, we forged this path and now we're forging a new path. And so, like you said, the, 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 they're, they're trickling it out because they're testing the waters because it's absolutely necessary because we don't have a choice. We're at the edge. And so what needs to be reimagined is it is out of necessity 
not out of like we can't continue along this trajectory right now and we're feeling it all over the place in every sector and that's like charles eisenstein's book the most beautiful world that we know is possible right that we can imagine is possible that's the same thing yes it's there's no point in in, in laying blame and you know and and there 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 still needs to be reconciliation we can't forget about that but the Let's let's move forward. No laying blame because that's not going to help us. What what is that going to do? Does that make you feel better? Um, maybe for a minute, but then we're back at the same point. We we haven't moved the dial anywhere, right? So <clears throat> we need to keep going. What's the next step? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, you're absolutely right. It still requires it still requires reconciliation. But the, but the blame, shame, finger pointing circle just keeps you in one vortex and we're being called to a new vortex. That's beautiful. Thank you. Just in, in terms of my kind of my final thoughts and over to, to you, T, is um, I, I think where we ended up is really important because energetically and emotionally the emotions that we need to hold right now for healing need to be above the line so are we truly going to heal holding blame or is the emotion that we need the emotions that we need to be holding in our re-entry and the work that we have to do next do they need to be higher than that they need to be hopeful. We're at a tipping point now. So I think where we have circled back to and what I'd like to leave with is there is an opening right now. Organizations across the board, and I'm not just talking corporate, I'm talking government, I'm talking decision-making bodies, I'm talking change-making <laughs> ecosystems are recognizing that they need to do and be better. Their primary driver is that they're, they're facing a uh, succession of, of talent retiring. So there's an openness to act um, in terms of tangible um, deliveries and tangible actions moving forward. I would just say every conversation that you're in right now, take a breath. Take a breath and ask yourself, does this decision need to be made right now? Can we slow down and do this more intentionally? Can we create some space around this decision? Can we sit in where we feel really confident, but also reach into where we actually beyond where we feel as confident and practice that braiding for impact. Those are some things that I'd just love to people to think about taking away for future conversations. Yeah. I want to just give us, us a, each a last kind of word. So I'm actually, I'm actually going to you, Christina, you know, from your center of systems and shine and soul, not role, like how would you, how do you want to close us today or what's your closing thoughts? So, so a, a couple things, and actually, just after what Shar said, um, I couldn't help but think of: uh, we are called to get our house in order. So, internally and externally, get like get your house in order from a place of love, not from a place of like, which um, right, but from a place of love. But get your house in order inside. And, and out and that's um what we're we're called we're called to do so i'll i'll, I'll leave us with that <laughs> over to you sharon uh the word that comes to my mind is compassion um <clears throat> just you know Yes, we are called to, to get our house in order, and um, and we we have to. I think that 
we can serve ourselves and everyone better if we do everything with um, a lens of compassion. That's compassion for ourselves. Like, oh, you know, like we we tend to berate ourselves. Oh, my house needs a lot of order. Like, blah, blah, you know, um, or judge others. Their house needs to be in order. Um, that's where we tend to go often. So I, I think just compassion for where everybody is at, and and um, and knowing that um, we have we don't like it's the time thing. It's like we don't have a lot of time, but at the same at the same hand, time is a is a construct. We have the time. Take the time. Be in the present. Thank you, Sharon. I want to pick up on the time thing because as we know, things turn on a dime, right? They may We might think it's taken 150 years to make that happen, but it actually took 150 years to make that happen, but now it's happening right now, right? And who knows what that, who knows what dime we're turning on right now? So, um, what I want to close with is actually the connection of the dots of the braid, because I've really heard actually each of you speak right from what you bring to the braid. And so anyone listening, when the braid is the boardroom, your boardroom will be a reflection of the call inside of each person at that table. And so Char said, there's an opening, there's an opening, which of course what all she does is call people to the fire. It's all about openings, right? And then Christina said, there's, a, so to, there's an opening to get your house in order, to get your house in order. Christina's all about shine, where systems and heart, when they come together, they're shine, right? Right over to Sharon's, all, basically all our relations, compassion, all our relations. And that's what you bring to the braid. And then, then I'm doing my thing. My thing is like the answer is already here. It's just a great mystery. Our job is to pay attention to the freaking clues and to trust the clues. So I'm closing with the, the, mis the great mystery of us is waiting for us to listen. And the time is now and it turns on a dime. So let's turn our boardrooms and our committees and our circles and our all the things that we do together into a and individually into a into a braid um and anyone listening i want you to know this has been a fire circle experience uh, between the four of us and in your comments on the side and as we close 2021 um, our invitation to you is that there's a place for you in the house in our braid in the great braid of all of us. And there's a path for you here. And just keep coming back together. We gather every Wednesday in this co-created move forward on the stones of the path that we're literally seeing as they present themselves to us. So thank you for being here. Shar, is there anything, just as I feel like you as the visionary and founder of Powerhouse should really close the year for us on gather, no? No, see, that's what she does. That's part of it too. She's like, yeah, no, no, no. In in the indigenous way, the yeah, no. You go ahead, Overbury. You got this. <sighs> Thank you for the story of you, the story of us, and the story of all. As you close 2021, make no mistake that you are a big, beautiful piece of the story. Thank you for being here. We will see you soon yeah